Hadrian wanted his own building legacy to be equally memorable, and the crown jewel in that legacy would have a direct link to the reign of his legendary predecessor. Soon after he became emperor, he set his sights on rebuilding a burned out temple complex dating from the time of Augustus. In the rubble of the old ruin, he commissioned his most famous structure, the Pantheon, a majestic temple to the Roman gods. The Pantheon is arguably the most amazing structure ever built by the Romans. Why? The rotunda. The rotunda, a huge interior space capped by a magnificent dome ceiling, was the heart of the Pantheon's design. At its center, the concrete dome rises nearly 150 feet. It spans exactly the same length across without any support from columns or buttresses. 150 feet is a great distance to span. And the guts that they had to attempt something so wide, to span something so wide, this is one of the grand achievements. The Pantheon's dome would remain the largest unsupported concrete span in the world for 18 centuries. Before Hadrian's engineers could start pouring the dome's concrete ceiling, they needed to figure out how to direct its weight away from its center. Otherwise, when they removed the wooden framework holding the ceiling in place, 3,000 tons of concrete would collapse under its own weight. Today, when we build in concrete, we introduce a steel tension rod, which picks up half of the stresses in the concrete. The Romans couldn't do this. Therefore, the dome of the Pantheon was constantly pushing outward towards its base. The Pantheon's engineers developed several radical solutions to make sure its ceiling and the emperor's reputation wouldn't come crashing down. First, they built a solid base of walls 20 feet thick to act as a foundation for the ceiling. They used the vertical walls on either side to help support the weight of the dome from pushing outwards. They used the walls to buttress the dome itself. Next, as the ceiling rose toward its apex, they mixed in lighter materials with the cement and poured a progressively thinner layer of it. Roman concrete, like concrete today, used aggregate, usually stones, to bond the concrete together. Uh, in the Pantheon's dome, Romans used a common technique at that time of actually inserting hollow amphora, or jugs, inside of the concrete to displace some of the concrete and lighten the load. To make the ceiling even lighter, the builders molded recessed panels called coffers into the ceiling, which served two ingenious purposes. These coffers are meant, obviously, for an aesthetic uh, purpose, that is that they um, allow the uh, surface of the domed area to be decorated, uh, but at the same time, they reduce the amount of concrete which is necessary uh, for the dome itself. A final weight-shedding alteration immediately became the Pantheon's most distinctive feature, the oculus a 30-foot wide hole in the center of the ceiling. The oculus eliminates the stress of heavy concrete at the dome's weakest point, and it lights up the interior like the sun does the earth. Imagine as a ancient, uh, never having been in this kind of interior space before, because no, no other interior space had ever looked like it before, uh, feeling um, the religious aspect of the interior itself. Um, a building which was dedicated to all the gods. The Pantheon's engineers strove for perfection and almost achieved it. <laughs> 